not only can you have um, neutron stars, but it turns out neutron stars actually are pulsars. I'm going to explain this in a second here. Now, neutron star, they actually, they spin very fast. Okay, so these ones right here, they spin really fast. And the reason they do that is, well, imagine you had a large radius first and you're spinning around. Okay, imagine this is like a star here and it's rotating. Well, what happens is, if you took that same thing but you made it a lot smaller, what if the radius instead was like this? So it started off this wide and it became really, really small at the end of sort of exploding and losing all of its mass or a lot of the stuff being sent away. The result then would be something a lot smaller, but it would spin even faster. So this is something we call conservation of angular momentum, and it's a, it's a bit like a figure skater. You know, if you're a figure skater and you start doing a spin, you know, to turn around, you start off with your arms wide for your turn. That tells you sort of how much angular momentum you have. And then while you're spinning, if you can bring your arms and legs in, in other words, make yourself a smaller radius, then you're actually going to spin faster in order to keep the same angular momentum. I think I have a little uh, YouTube video for you. Uh, here it is. This is just, this is a girl here who's doing exactly this. So this girl is uh, going to start spinning. Watch her arms and her legs are wide to start with. And then she brings them in. And as she brings her arms and legs in, she starts spinning faster and faster and faster. Of course, it's very blurry on this video, but I think you get the idea. So this is something that happens within a neutron star. It starts to spin very fast. Now, how fast do I mean fast here? I mean, some of them can be hundreds of times per second. That means these things can spin hundreds of times in one second. They can, of course, be less, but uh, some of the ones that have been seen spin hundreds of times in every one second these things are spinning. So these are like this figure skater we just saw, but just going crazy. I mean, they're really spinning super, super, super fast. Now, of course, what happens then is this. When something spins that fast, it turns out there's a really neat effect that happens. So this is your neutron star and it's spinning really fast. Well, what happens is you end up with some radiation that sort of leaks out. This is actually going to be very, very strong electromagnetic radiation. In other words, you have light of all different types. Whoops, it's not radiations. So electromagnetic radiation. So you have this light, very, very intense light that's sort of coming out in sort of a cone It'll, of course, that cone will sort of rotate. So this cone sort of goes, and of course, the same thing happens over here. So because of that, then you have this sort of cone of light that's going around and around and around, you know, hundreds of times per second, perhaps. Now, what happens then if that cone of light is lined up with us? So what if, for example, here's us on Earth. And let's say we were looking at this neutron star here. So let's say we're looking over at that one we would not see this radiation coming out of it, well, not as easily at least, because it's not lined up. I mean, this radiation sort of goes that way, sort of goes that way, so it's sort of being sent out. Of course, it goes around in a circle. Same thing over here. As this thing right here spins, as the neutron star spins, you get this immense amount of really, really intense radiation, this light coming out, and all sorts of different frequencies of light. So if we're looking at it over here, it's not lined up to us. But what if there was one that was lined up? So what if instead we're looking at a neutron star really far away, but happens to be lined up? I mean, these things can be found in any orientation. What if it's lined up to where this sort of cone of sort of where this stuff right here is? What if it sort of lines up with us so we can see it? If it's lined up like that, we're going to, if we look at this signal, we're going to see sort of a dot and then a dot, then a dot, then a dot, if we're looking in a certain type of light, if we're looking at the right color of light. So because of that, if, uh, so this is the, the fact that neutron stars should be pulsars, in other words, they should be doing this. However, we don't always see them doing this, which means what we call a pulsar, it's a bit sort of selfish. We only call something a pulsar if it's lined up with us, with our line of sight. Because then we can see this intense radiation that's sort of hitting us. So we can see sort of a click, 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 click. 
you know, as it sort of spins, we can sort of have this light sort of meet us. It's a bit like a lighthouse, you know, where its light is sort of spinning around, going, you know, hits us, and goes all the way around and sort of runs into us. Well, in this case, it's going around and around and around, but sometimes it sort of runs into us as it goes around and around, as it's pointing, of course, it shoots out this way, like this. But it will hit us. So that means a pulsar is just a neutron star that's lined up in the correct way so that we can see its pulse. Now what's kind of cool about this, take a look at this picture. This is called the Crab Nebula. Remember now the word nebula just meant cloud. And anything that was seen in the sky a long time ago, this is hundreds of years ago, when they saw things in the sky that looked cloudy, they always called it a nebula. But lots of different nebulas are caused by lots of different things. Some of them are just gases being compressed because of um, another star. In this case, it's thought to be a supernova explosion that happened in around, uh, it's 1054. Now what's neat is that the Chinese were really good at sort of looking at stuff in the sky and marking down where it was and what date it was. So it turns out in 1054 something really bright was seen in the sky. So bright, in fact, the Chinese uh, people who were looking at it at the time, they decided to mark it down. They decided to note it. And so that was something seen in 1054. There was a bright, bright thing in the sky and it was seen roughly where we now see the Crab Nebula. So what's really cool is this. We think that an explosion happened then, so it was probably a star that went supernova. When it did its explosion in 1054, <clears throat> this would have been seen on Earth. So because of that, they probably saw this bright sort of dot in the sky for some time, maybe for a few days or maybe even more. And this bright thing, of course, then would settle down and they wouldn't see it anymore. But what really had happened then was a star exploded. And when the star went supernova, that means the result should be either a black hole or a neutron star. So what's thought to have happened here is that there was a star in the middle that exploded, that was seen in 1054, and what we're seeing here is the end result of the explosion, which means the star sent out a lot of material out. And what we're seeing here is some of this material that's being heated up, and so we're seeing this hot gas here that gives off this really cool shape. And what is really, really cool, this was a very nice way to sort of test our models. If we think that a supernova causes a neutron star, which should then be a pulsar, scientists look very carefully at the center of the Crab Nebula, and it turns out right in the center, there is a neutron star. And in fact, that neutron star is a pulsar. So that one right there, there is a pulsar in the center. I can't remember exactly where it is, but this one here has a pulsar. So it was really nice is that this is, this is a nice example of something where we know that there's a pulsar in the middle, which we think came because of, well, it made a neutron star, which is a pulsar. Remember, neutron stars are pulsars. Just that what we call a pulsar on Earth is just only when it's lined up with us. Well, it turns out this one in the Crab Nebula is lined up with us. So this one right here is a really good sort of test for our models to say that, well, our ideas of what happens with stars are at least well supported by what we see.